All right, you guys, so this is the Conba Q2 LED review. And what you guys can see here is the Xbox 360 version. It is the silver one. And it, you know, it plug works on both Xbox and P uh, PC. So all the buttons are illuminated, as you can see. The back two buttons are uh, blue, where the six main buttons are going to be white. The start button itself, as well, is a blue button as well. There are four different modes for the buttons. The first one is the standard illuminated button mode. And then if you push turbo and select at the same time, you can see the start button illuminates and stays illuminated. And the other buttons don't actually function the LEDs. If you push turbo and select again, all the LEDs come on. So you guys can see the start button and all the other buttons are illuminated. And then if you push it one more time, no buttons work. Or the buttons all work, but there's no illumination. So let me turn the lights off so you guys can actually see what this looks like with the lights off. So aside from the minor count of the actual uh, daylight outside, this is the combo Q2 with all the lights functioning. So those are the buttons. The types of buttons are going to be your a Conba brand button, as well as the switches, and the stick is also Conba brand. So what we're going to do next is we're actually going to open it up so you guys can actually see what the buttons look like and what the stick looks like. So basically the reason I did this styrofoam thing was so that that way the stick isn't grinding on the ground and it still provides a good base of where it can just kind of hang out. So on this stick, on the bottom, you can see eight screws. There's one here, there's two on there, two there, two there, and then two at the very end. The one in the upper right is your traditional don't unscrew me or you void your warranty, but we're opening this up, so we don't really care about that. The four hole, the four base little rubber things, those are just attached to the main bottom plate, so you don't actually have to worry about unscrewing those. So let's go ahead and unscrew this so you guys can see what's inside. All right, so we got eight, all eight of those screws undone. Now we take off this bottom plate, very hefty in size, solid metal. So it's not really gonna go anywhere. It's got this safety protective plastic over it as well. So don't have to worry about scratching that. Set that somewhere safe. And now as you guys can see, because all the buttons are pretty much held down and the stick is being moved, uh, all the light buttons eliminated, there's a start button. So this gives you an idea of what it looks like on the underside. And to the left right here is the microphone board. The LED board is actually something quite crazy. As you guys can see, right down here is where mo pretty much all of the brains of the stick are um, contained. So you have the PCB over here, which has the start, select, start button is actually there. The select button, turbo guide, menu buttons, guide and menu, and then the mode button. Start button is here. So this black wire here goes all the way to there. As you can see. Next up, we have the brains of the operation. So here is your joystick cable. Joystick goes right over to here. And then you have your button selections. So you have your start and select buttons here. And this is actually right here is the single LED. So you can see start ground and then voltage. No. Oh. So you have your LEDs for the start and select ground. And then every other cable right here, you can see your A and X button. And you can tell these most of these boards were made for uh, dual mod, like for the dual mod six, because you have A and X. So your A button corresponds to your X button on a PlayStation controller. I can't see them back there. Everything you have your 
right trigger and R2. Here, left trigger and L2. So you can see left trigger L2, and it also contains each piece contains each LED. So if you look at it, this is one cable unit in itself, and every other button is like that. So if you ever have a button issue or a cabling issue, you just have to remove that individual cable. So yeah, I actually, I actually had that backwards. This is the LED cable and this is the button cable. So if I didn't say that before, now you know. All of the LED buttons are combo brand LED buttons, which are connected with just a standard Molex style connector. Which is just your standard connector right there. Plugs into every one of the buttons. Makes it easy to power and power off the LEDs. And then your regular quick disconnects that you can find on any arcade button. Now moving on to the joystick. The joystick does say combo and it is a square gate. However, if you pop out the square gate, like so, and you pop out the PCB for the buttons, what you see is your standard PCB that you find on any Salma joystick. So while the, it says combo, the combo housing and everything, it's still a, like, the switches and everything are still Sanwa. So you can basically easily swap it in and out for a Sanwa uh, arcade stick. But actually, let's get into the LED board for the joystick. Alright, so let's get on to the first part. Clear ball top, clear dust washers. So, a little bit of grease on this one so you can buff that out. The dust washer has these lines on it. I don't know if they're gonna show. You guys can see the lines right there. It just kind of gives it a cool little effect. And now, the fun part is this is the joystick housing. It's held in by the four screws on top. One, two, three, four. This is the bottom. LED plug is right here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually plug it in. Then we're gonna plug the joystick board back in. The fun part is remembering how to put this back together. So as you guys can see, the LEDs are on this board underneath. So there's no really magic to it, it just comes through the underpass of the, it comes from under the plate. So let's see if we can actually get these out. Yeah, we're taking this whole thing apart, so. I will not be recording me putting it back together, because that can take a while. Plus I might do a little bit of part swapping. Just so I might actually stream, not stream, but uh, record the part swaps, which will be a different episode really, because it's really not a review. Ouch. Okay, so there's your plate. And there is the brains of the entire operation for the LED part. Hopefully this doesn't blind the camera, but as you can see, whichever direction, there's no real direction sequence to it. It's like, oh, you're pushing the button? Okay, we light up. So unfortunately, you can't really replace this with a JLF. Um, you can actually replace everything except for this board. 
So that's really not a bad thing. But at the same time, if you ever want to just use a different stick like a Sumitsu or anything, you're going to have to swap out majority of the parts. However, the gates are going to be exactly alike. So let's go. Actually. Okay, so this is your standard JLF. And this is the gate to it. So we're going to pop this off. And before we do that, I'm actually going to let you guys see the board. This is the board on the JLF. As you can see, exactly like. So if I were to pop off this PCB and pop this one on, it works. The switches are all the same, so it's basically the same type of design of PCB. The only difference is this is green. So, not much difference there. This is a JLF circle gate, or a square gate actually, sorry. Square gate, this is the combo one. As you know with the JLFs, you can pop these out. If you do it the right way. And you can replace it with a, you know, octagon gate. Right now I just made it a four way diagonal, but you can place an octagon gate, octagate, square gate, circle gate, whatever gate you want. And we put this on right here. And it fits. So fortunately, if you don't like this type, you know, the way this is designed or anything, you just pop that off, put in a JLF gate. But you have more options instead of just having a circle gate. These are always tricky to get off. Yep. Yeah. So let's put this back on. First, let's figure out how to put this back on. There we go. And I just place it with a JLF gate. So, it feels exactly the same. Right. Wow, I might just completely fall. So, we place it with the JLF gate. You can see it works perfectly fine. Down, down, whichever direction you want. Fortunately, because the way the wires are all set in here, you know which way the gate's going to go. So, we're going to put this back on the plate first. All right, now on the next piece of business the buttons. So all the buttons are connected with quick disconnects. So as you guys can see, all the quick disconnects are there. They're encased in the rubber, the same type that are used on the Mad Cat CEs and pretty much every other fighting stick out there. So there's no like metal having to grab or anything. Now what we're gonna do though, is we're actually gonna take one of these out and unplug all the wires and kind of try to remember which ones are which or grab a piece of tape and write it down. Otherwise, you're gonna have a hell of a time trying to figure it out without disconnecting this. So, every button is a Conba brand button. The switches in there are Conba. The LED board is Conba. It's held in by these two tabs on the sides. One there, one there. That's how you hold the button part in. These two tabs keep the button inside the housing. So we're going to pop these out, same way you do every other button. So first let's look at this. This is the top cap. Like most clear buttons, you can take it out and you can put your own art inside the button. So you can put it back inside. And then this little switch right here is what activates the lever, or the switch. Alright, so as you guys can see, the LED board is inside the button right here and it's held in by these tabs on the side so there's one right here there's one right here so you do have to use a little bit of force to get them out so you've got to basically I'm putting a screwdriver in here and then I'm going to pull it back and you can see the board rises up a bit 
So go ahead and just push it through. Let gravity be your friend. And I think this one's actually already through. Nope. Do the same thing here. Push it in. And there you go. So the board is now out. And now it's going to take a little bit of a push. And another push to get it through. I'm going to try to get it out still. It doesn't want to come out. So we're just going to put it in there. Scoop it up. So that is the LED board right there. This is all that's left is the button in the housing. Much similar to what you find in any any standard button housing. For some reason there's not one in there. God damn it. We record button housing. Three, two, one. So here's the button housing, your standard button housing. Uh, I'm not sure what type of switch this is. Honestly, the way the connectors are remind me a lot of a Simitsu switch. However, we're going to pop this out. And just pushing the button. And that's the switch. Now, for those of you who may not like these switches when you get them, luckily, it's easy enough to pop them out after you take out the board and everything. You just squeeze the tabs on the side, and it pops out. Now, some of you may be wondering what kind of switches you can use with this. Well, fortunately, Sanwa buttons all use a similar switch, which allows you to interchange switches between Simitsu and Sanwa buttons. So what I have here is a brand new OBS 30 switch, a brand new song with switch basically, or button I should say. So, yeah. For those of you not familiar, you can pop the buttons out on the side here. And then take the button out, squeeze the two tabs on the side, push them through. And there you go. That is a song with switch. On the bottom, it will say Sanwa right there, which makes it a bit hard to see. So you can take this and take your housing for your Conbus Q2 LED Pro, put the button in there, put the LED piece back into there and make sure the tabs are snapped on. This will go back on top, and you will have a Sanwa button that works with the Q2 stick, mm -hmm. which I actually did last night because I wanted to make sure this works. And there you go. So that's a Q2 button with all the buttons with the LED board and everything intact. There's a Sanwa switch in here instead, though instead of the Q2 LED. What's up guys, this is Slash. I just want to thank you guys for watching the breakdown and review of the Comba Q2 Glow. We're going to be doing a follow-up review with online gameplay in Street Fighter 4 and from fellow players on how they felt about the stick after using it. If you guys like what you saw, please do subscribe over here and also follow over on twitch.tv slash teamchaos. All the links to this product are going to be in the description and if you guys have any questions, do comment here. Or if you don't like the way YouTube has changed their comment system, hit me up on Twitter at chaos underscore gaming or at slash 5150. Also, make sure you guys check out the videos we have uploading right now from Saturday Slugfest. There's a ton of great Pacific Northwest FGC content there, so make sure you guys check that, tweet it out, let everybody know. Thanks a lot, you guys, and see you guys next time. Mustang.